It's the last week of July 2010. Uh, I thought I'd walk through the garden just to see how much it's grown. Uh, mostly to show that you, when you put the plants in, they're so small and you think you're going to have a lot of room and everything gets so overgrown. Um, also want to show you uh, these blanket flowers that I've planted. They just keep reseeding, but they attract the um, most beautiful birds, goldfinches. Uh, I can see them, but I don't know that you can see them in the camera. There they go. There's still one in there. Oh, you can barely see them. There he goes. I love the goldfinches, so they're attracted by the black-eyed Susans, but anyway, back to the point of all this is, um, hey, I try to keep the flowers around everything so it doesn't look like a farm, but um, there's one cantaloupe plant and there's plenty of cantaloupes on it. There's another goldfinch over there. Um, but anyway, so the cantaloupe plants have just really taken off in here and taken up two plants, take up all the room. See we have cantaloupes all over. There's two right there and another ripe one down there. Um, everything's in flower. We've had the hottest summer I think on record. And um, it's just really been dry, not enough water. Things look overall pretty good. Here's my Texas star hibiscus. It's in flower. The asparagus plant just looks like a big bush of a fern. More asparagus. The uh, blackberries just really suffered. I guess they didn't get enough water. And so a lot of them have turned black and dried out. And there's the rest of the garden. The strawberry plants look horrible too. I need to get some water on them someday. But um, here's another two more cantaloupe plants in here, and they've taken up all the room. And another asparagus fern. As you can see, my strawberry plants look horrible. And uh, the tomatoes. Uh, I've done I've done a pretty good job of keeping them all separated out. I have six plants in the main garden in there in groups of two, and the biggest problem I have is the um, this jelly bean tomato is just like flopping over. So I thought I had enough room to get through, but every time you try and get through in between these two sections of plants, you end up knocking a few off. But um, it's pretty crowded in here, and this is a one very long cucumber plant. It is huge. It's a pointed something number. It, it's huge. Pretty good cucumbers, lots of cucumbers, just a huge plant. Now this one right here is my sweet and crunchy. I love these cucumbers, and there's lots of them on there. There's bees doesn't take up as much room. But you can see as you want to walk through this pathway how overgrown it's gotten. The daisies have have sprung up and gotten big and um, it's always a good idea to have some long pants on when you're walking through the cucumbers. Uh, and for once the cucumbers did not turn bitter which they often do when it's so hot and dry but I try to keep some water on them. Here's the other, the last cantaloupe plant that makes five that we have and over there that's where the watermelon plant had been and only got two off of that and it died I think it was just too hot and dry for it and um, I got a cu another cucumber plant coming up under the row cover the back of the house Oof, spider webs but just to see how much it's it's grown up you know it looked like when you put the plants in that 
you know, there was room for twice as much stuff in there, but there's really not. Um, and as you see, I do have kind of a row of flowers in front of these melons. They've really been hurt by the heat. And even Marigold is looking horrible. Uh, but and then I got a little pepper plant out here. I put this pepper plant in a pot and I sunk the pot. And then at the end of the season, I'm going to come up before the first frost and I'm going to pull the pot up, put it in the garage overnight, and then I'll put it back out during the daytime. And then we'll probably have like an Indian summer after the first frost and we can spend more time out. It's got some nice bell peppers in there and it's got some flowers, but I don't know if the flowers are going to make it. And over here, got more flowers. And some more blackberries. Like I said, they've kind of suffered and it's just so much work to keep up with them. Now this is where I had the potatoes, the Yukon Golds, and I dug those up already. And yesterday I dug up the the other ones, the Kennebecs. And um, so there's nothing in that back row. But I went ahead and put some onions in here because uh, these onions just didn't do a whole lot because they were in poor soil in the back. And um, I went ahead and tried to plant a second, set, you know, succession of potatoes. Now whether or not these will work, we'll find out. But um, maybe they will and maybe they won't. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And um, you can see the raspberries are developing right there. And see so they've been dry too, so when you look at the ones, uh, these aren't the best looking raspberries I've seen. They need more water. I don't know if it's worth it. And there's another big asparagus fern. It's kind of draped over my blueberry bush. And things have a way of popping up, including these. This cage that David built for me worked really great. The birds could not get the blueberries. I got to eat them, but the, the blueberry bush is still pretty small. It needs to produce more. Lots of compost making. And these flowers will be blooming probably in just a couple week or two and this is my overflow garden I got the onions it's mostly uh, the spring onions or the green onions and they flowered and then I'm letting them go to seed I've got to work on those a little bit got a banana pepper plant and this is a one of those English cucumbers with the small seed cavities and it's done pretty well Although it's being attacked by cucumber beetles. I don't know if you can see that cucumber beetle on there. He ran off. Anyway. Um, so that's one cucumber plant. And then I put uh, a couple of tomato plants that were either going to die or had to be planted out right away. So I put them out here. They don't do as well out here because they don't get as much sun. The soil's not quite as good. Not on soaker hoses. But um, actually, that Juliet has produced a lot. And what are those? Purple cone flowers. The, uh, it's been a bad year for green beans. And the flowers look good. My shade garden down there. And This is my um, crepe myrtle that I got last year. It's called something like Firecracker. It's got just beautiful red blooms on it. And it's our house. We have a pretty big front yard. Lots of flowers. I need to get out here and deadhead some of them constantly. There's always things to do if you want to do them. I always have lots of petunias in the front. I like them. And need to get out here and do some watering. And of course, the good old flag. And then we 
we got a shade garden up here. We have had a lot of weeds popping up. It's been um, it's just been so hot and dry. The the weeds grow best better than the grass. And this is the shade garden. Got lots of petunias, and it's a little shady here with a little bit of sun. I put lobelia, the annual lobelia. Now that's pretty, isn't it? I got more of those. They seem to like more sun than they did down than they got down there. Got more over here. And then Helleborus. They stay nice and green all winter long. Even flower in the winter. Maybe late spring, early spring. So that's the garden and then we're back around to the other side of the house. Back. We've gotten a ton of cantaloupe. Cantaloupes have done great this year. I, oh, here we are. There's the birds are back in there. If you can see them. See the little yellow goldfinch? They love to eat these blanket flowers. And they reseed themselves, so they just come back every year all on their all by themselves. My mom's rose. And back to the main garden. Oh, I have another little pepper plant on the outside. And I put um put these flowers all the way around. Tomatoes look good. And I don't know if you can tell what I've done with the tomato plants, but what I do is I put two to two um, together not right next to each other, well they're close to each other, they're probably like three, four feet away. There's one, and if you look through you can see the other one down there. And then I put cages on them, I use the tent, I take off those cheap little things they give you and I use uh, tent stakes to hold it down, and then um, I put these other kind of stakes in to hold everything up, and then I put these trifold cages around to hold the hold everything up because once you get all the leaves and the tomatoes on the ground then you're just going to have a mess and they've done well these are my fourth of july ones two of them here and then it's a, the other view from and if you ever wonder why things might not grow sometime i decided to dig a hole and put in a move a couple of my asparagus plants and I ended up putting them there but when I dug them out all of these rocks came out of where I put them so that tells you what's underneath the ground it's either clay or rocks sometimes you find hunks of cement that's it bye